right. Thanks, Angeline. Okay, um, right, so eight, ten. I think it's been a long day for everyone. Right, now we try to keep this short and sweet so everyone can go home soon. Right, okay. So, anyway, my name is Nicholas. Uh, my partner is Nipun. So, today we actually be discussing something that we actually used in our personal projects. Uh, we actually incorporated a, an app, uh, a map, into our project. So, basically, as what the title says, we are able to exploit certain geographical information in React. Mapbox, DeckGL with PostGIS. Post so DeckGL basically is another library. Um, I'll get to that shortly. A lot of big words, but generally, it's just, a, it's just us using the map to actually render information um, that we actually need. So there are several map wrappers for React. Um, yeah, I mean, earlier on, a, a couple of my partners actually asked how many React developers we have here. So I think for people who are com uh, familiar with React, um, it's going to be quite easy because it works as a React com class component. So for those who are not familiar, don't worry, when you study React, the first thing you will study is class components. And after that, everything's going to be very simple. <laughs> right. So these are the, uh, the more popular React mappers. Um, on the left, you have React Leaflet. Um, in the middle is Pigeon Maps. On the right, of course, is the famous Google Maps that everybody knows. Um, React Map GL. So why did we choose React Map GL? Uh, firstly, it is it's a it's a wrapper developed by Uber. So, do we have anybody from Uber or Gojek here, or or Grab? <laughs> right. <You can> hire us. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, because it was um, designed by I mean, the fact that it was designed by Uber gave the I mean, it was it was um, how should I put it? The documentation was actually pretty clean, um, pretty straightforward to use, as compared to Pigeon Maps and the Flip. So, I, I guess maybe for our standard, we are not. Uh, high level enough to actually understand documentation that isn't structured, right? So basically, this is what it is. Um, like you can see, it's a React component for Mapbox GL. GL here, like I mentioned, stands for Graphic Library. So um, as I mentioned, um, so it is a class component, right? Um, plug and play, very simple. I will get to the attributes shortly. And I think uh, what's important is the last point over here. So Mapbox, essentially, uh, it's a layer of map. So how it works is basically you can actually compile different layers on top of one another. And that actually allows you to render 2D or 3D graphics, which is quite cool. Um, do you have the, the website, actually? Oh, for the... Yeah, for DECGL. Um, just going to show you, you a quick... Oops. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it this way. DEC.GL. So um, we're not going to talk much about DECGL, but basically this is what DECGL um, does. It's an example. So this is pretty cool. Um, so whoever actually will be working on visualization projects, I mean, this is a library that you can actually consider. Uh, I would say the documentation is quite straightforward. Right. Okay, okay let's present. The yeah. Presentation. Okay. So moving on. Um, right. So these are the components which you probably will have to use or understand, be familiar, uh, be familiar with um, in order to use the component itself. So um, as I explain this, I will actually show you the code so it's easier for you to visualize. Um, the first, com first attribute we have uh, is the MapGL component. So um, this, uh, what, yeah. yep. Is it? Okay, is it, is it okay? Is it clear enough? Okay. So um, like I mentioned, um, what you'll be rendering is the React MapGL. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, you can actually customize the height and the width. So a demo on how it looks like. Actually, uh, this is how it looks like. Like that, is it too small? Okay, so this is a simple basic map with nothing. I mean, it's just a simple layer. Um, we have actually set the initial rendering uh, viewport. That, this is the point I'm going to come to next uh, as the middle of Singapore. So, um, <laughs> it's here, right? Yep. So um, jump a little bit, viewport essentially allows you to specify the latitude and longitude. I think it's quite straightforward. Um, navigation control is basically what you see uh, as a plus and minus sign you know, at the side of the map. If you want to zoom in, you want to zoom out. You don't really need it um, unless, because you still, get, you still can zoom in and zoom out without navigation control. But um, typically people include that because they want to add like a message or some information. It's like an information panel essentially, right? Um, what I mean by that is this, this little thing over here. This is the navigation control. Right, and 
earlier on, I mentioned that Mapbox essentially uh, works. It's it's it's, an, it's a layer of Map, right? So because of that, you're actually able to layer. Uh, you're actually able to pile different layers on top of one another. So they actually offer you a map style. It allows you to customize your different styles, to customize uh, different layers for Mapbox as well. And I guess for people who have used APIs before, I think you guys should be familiar that um, you usually have to obtain a certain token from the API provider. So it's actually quite straightforward. Yes, did we close it? Okay. <laughs> I think we did. Yeah, um, let me just have a quick one. So, Mapbox. No, wait, just do it. All right, so yeah. So, yeah, basically, um, when you get to Mapbox, right, they will just ask you to register for an account. You can actually um, include your app, any apps that you're actually working on. But if not for basic functionalities, I would say a public token is enough for you to get um, like uh, distances between two user. Uh, different endpoints. Um, a private key would be more suitable for if your app requires high volumes of, you, know, you, need, to, you need to ping the API more of, um, because most API providers will give you a free tier, you know, maybe up to 15,000 hits a month. But for apps that require a higher volume load, then maybe you have to pay. Um, one thing um, that I have to also highlight is while doing your, okay, so as you can see over here, We've included the API access token on line 37. But you can see that we didn't write it down because um, it's always good practice never to publish your private or public token on your, on your repo, right? So we, leave it, we include it in a, in a EMV file. So do remember to add it to your GitHub, so it doesn't get uh, committed and pushed to your GitHub repo. Uh, right, so this is our presentation. So, yep. Um, so earlier on, I just showed you guys the basic map demo. So right now, I'm just going to hand over time to Nipun. He's going to actually show you more on how you can actually include markers, pop-ups, and uh, deck GL. Okay. Mm. Uh, hi, guys. So my part of the presentation was kind of more technical, but there's very few React developers, so I'll just zip through. Um, so yeah, before you continue, you should realize that everything in React all your HTML or whatever you, whatever graphic you see on a web page is in the form of a component, which React would compile to an HTML and, Java and related JavaScript and other technical stuff that happens in your browser. So like what you see, your page is a component, and inside that, your map is a component, okay? So now moving on, um, so what MatGL does is it gives us two other components, and it allows us to put these components as children to our main map component. And the, the power with that is that it allows you to interact with your map a lot more. So marker allows you to put in markers inside your map, which you can see here. So these are all uh, markers. And oh, OK. So these are all markers. And for markers, you just have to specify the longitude and latitude of each map marker. And pop-ups will allow you to just show a pop-up which has information that, whatever information you want to present. And usually you would use that as to associate with the marker. Um, I'll quickly run through the code. So for markers, you, like, you just have a React Map GL parent component. And inside that, you have children, uh, children components, which include like a marker component and navigation control component. And this is what your marker looks like. As I mentioned, it's as simple as specifying a longitude and a latitude. And within this, you can specify information. For me, like I created a separate component called location pin. But you can literally put anything there. You can even put like an HTML div saying boo, and then you'll see boo all over your map. So it's up to you. OK, so this it, it kind of gives you a lot of flexibility. As for pop-ups, which you can see here, uh, it's the same map, but the only thing is that you can click on this and you get pop-up information. And pop-up information, as shown here, is similar. It also is rendered as a child component over here. And in the child component, which is, sorry, uh, your render pop-up, it just, the thing about pop-ups is you have to conditionally render it. And over here, you just check if this particular element is null or doesn't exist. If it exists, then you display the pop-up. OK, um, so continuing forward, um, 
Yeah, okay, I, I meant, yeah, okay, we'll skip the slide. Next, I'll move it, is DECGL. So as Nicholas mentioned, uh, Mapbox is all about layers. And what you see on your web page is a compilation of layers, and it gives you one single layer. And DECGL, what it gives you, it's a data visualization suite. And it allows you to compile all forms of layers, including three-dimensional layers. Um, I'm not going to the 3D part, but that is very much possible. So for DECGL, oh yeah, also before I show you what, what DECGL can do, uh, it's worth mentioning that our backend uses a Postgres uh, database with the PostGIS extension. And PostGIS extension allows you to store geographical data. And it also allows you geospatial queries of data. Uh, there's certain specific functions. And this allows you to push a lot of your querying processing, which is generally mathematically quite intensive. And it allows you to just push it to the database so that your, your Node app can do whatever you want it to do. OK, uh, so I'll show you, quickly show you the code. So map.gl is here. And again, just like other cases, your deck.gl is rendered as a child component. And it's just simply here. It's just a child. And that's it. Uh, within this, you have to specify the kind of layer you want. So GeoJSON is just the kind of layer I was using. Uh, that's not very important at this stage. But it just allows you to specify and just put anything you want. So moving on to the deck.gl one. Uh, this one takes a bit of time to load. Uh, meanwhile, are you using Chrome? Yeah, yeah, I'm using Firefox. Firefox right, yeah. yeah. So these are you see all these red lines. They are all DECGL components. These are your election. Yeah, these are actually your election boundaries. So, yeah, in case you guys don't vote, you, you should, like you know you can find it here somewhere. Okay. Um, so also, what um, what DECGL allows you is you can interact with your map more. So let's say I click on this particular election boundary, and it allows me to create this, the viewport and then zoom down into it. And if I zoom out a bit more, I can just specify here, and it'll zoom into that. OK. Um, yeah, so basically, you know that the government knows everything about you, <laughs> including the shopping centers and the clinics near you. So yeah, we're all watching. <laughs> OK. So now, so I showed you what DECGL can do. Uh, I'll quickly just show you what happens in the back end. Oh, wait, sorry. Um, That's great. It's in this, it's, uh, oh, yeah, you have it all. Yeah, so we're using an ORM. And all you have to do is you have to specify, or tell your database there's a time called geometry. Because your, all your geographical information is basically coordinates in degrees, yeah, in, in degrees and radians. So you just have to specify that, oh, my location is a geometry type. OK, and then for querying, what you do is you would just call these functions. So this would essentially compile to an SQL function like this. So you see one electoral component, and just compiles into an SQL function, which is this. And it's it like, OK, the documentation isn't amazing for PostGIS, but it does simplify and speed up uh, geograph like GIS apps to a great extent. OK, so all this, uh, all this functionality relies a lot on PostGIS's uh, geographical processing capabilities. OK, so I, and then yes, thank you. Thanks a lot for staying here. And you can download our, you can like, you can download from our GitHub uh, this demo. Um, you will need a Mapbox API token, as Nicholas mentioned. And you'll also need to run a Postgres database server on your machine or wherever you keep, choose to render it. And you can also contact us if you have any questions. OK, so we're done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.